In section 13.3, we are exploring limits and continuity of multivariable functions. Now here, we begin to apply the techniques we learned in single variable calculus to multivariable calculus. And again, many natural extensions exist with some subtle differences that we'll be exploring here. So to get us started, I want to look at the limit of a function of two variables. So we say that a function f of two variables has a limit l, so l is some real number, as our point p approaches some fixed point p naught. If the distance between the function f of x, y and our real number l can be made arbitrarily small for all points p in the domain that are sufficiently close to p naught. So if such a limit exists, then we can write the following. We can say that the limit as the arbitrary point x, y approaches the fixed point x naught, y naught of our function f of x, y. Now an alternative way to write this would be to simply write the limit as p approaches p naught of the function f of x, y, and this is equal to the limit l, our real number l. Now, there's a major difference here between evaluating single variable functions and multivariable functions. So I want to point out those differences now. So with single variable functions, a point x on the number line is close to another point x naught if the distance between them is small. So we say that this is true if the distance between them in other words the absolute value of x minus x naught is small. Now with single variable functions we can only approach a point from the left and the right. Now, how is that going to change with functions of two variables? Well, in R2, a point P is close to another point P0 if, again, the distance between them is small. So we can say that the distance between them, so here we'll use the distance between point P and P0. So we can even think about this as the magnitude of the vector from point P to point P0. Or you can write this with one bar, whatever your little heart desires. But again, we know by now that the length of a vector is determined using the distance formula. So we have the square root of x minus x0 squared plus y minus y0 squared. And again, this is, the distance between them must be smaller, is small. Now, again, think back to your single variable case. X can only approach X naught from the left and the right. That's not going to hold true here with multivariable functions. So we can make a little note to ourselves that, in other words, this distance is small for all points P on all sides of P naught. So we can say that the distance from point P to point P naught is small for all points P on all sides of P naught. So in other words, we can't, we're not just coming from the left and the right. We could come from above or below. We could come on, at a diagonal. We could come at a parabola. We could have to come in every direction on all sides of P0. So, now that we've established one of the main differences here, let's go ahead and look at the formal definition. Here we go. Here is our formal definition for the limit of a function of two variables. So we say that a function f has a limit l as point p approaches point p naught, which we already know is written as the limit as that point x, y approaches the fixed point x naught, y naught of that multivariable function f of x, y 
Again, alternatively, we could write this as the limit as point P approaches P naught of f of x, y is equal to L. All right, so the function f has, again, a limit L as P approaches P naught if any given epsilon greater than zero, there must exist a delta greater than zero such that the distance between this function f of x, y and the limit L is less than epsilon whenever the point x, y is in the domain of f and the distance between point P and point P naught which again we know is defined using our distance formula, that's x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared is less than delta. So this is analogous of our formal definition, the epsilon delta definition of the limit. So again, we say that a function f has a limit l as p approaches p naught if given any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that the distance between the function and the limit L is less than epsilon whenever the point P is in the domain of F and the distance between point P and point P naught is less than delta. So therefore, what is this telling us? So therefore, the limit exists only if F of X, Y approaches L as P approaches P naught along all possible paths in the domain of f. So again, we say that the limit exists only if f of x, y approaches l as point p approaches p naught along all possible paths in the domain of the function. So this is, this final statement here is very similar to what we know from single variable calculus, with the exception of it's not just the limit is not just existing from the left and the right, now it's existing from all possible paths in the domain of our function f. 